Howdy, folks. <laughs> this week's special edition. Uh, last week, as anybody that's in Texas knows, we got cold and we blew water lines and all kinds of damages around the house. I took steps to prevent this situation from happening, but I didn't take them because of uh, thinking there was some Arctic blast coming down. So I want to cover the steps I took. Also, what I did do for the Arctic blast that came in, uh, we got down to an 11 degree chill factor with uh, winds that were whipping over 20, maybe even 30 miles an hour around here. We had quite a bit of snow, just something totally not normal for this area. And in fact, as a lot of people have said in Texas, we're not built to take this kind of cold. But the reality is there are certain steps you take, I think with a house anyways, no matter what. And I'm gonna cover those steps. Plus I'm also gonna uh, show you uh, how I had to cover up my spigots because we couldn't get any of the spigot covers that you can buy at the big box store. And so I had to, you know, make my own. And I did really quickly, really cheaply, threw something together that would save it. Now, there's a house, say, like right across the street from me. And it's a similar house, brick house, built about the same time. Uh, 12 water lines broke. Uh, it's a neighbor I talked to, and I told him what I did, and he, you know, he gave me one of these, oh man, I should have done that. Well, let's start with the very first thing I did on this house. When I purchased it within days of purchasing it, this is the first thing we looked at. The very first thing I did was I called a plumber in and I told him I will break the wall, whatever it takes to get to the main line that comes into the house from the outside city water line and put this valve in so that I can open and close this valve at any time to prevent any problem with uh, the house. If, the, if there's a water leak in the house, I can come here, throw this valve closed just like that really quickly and the water is, is stopped from coming into the house. So that's that's kind of a, you know, to me has always been a priority with the home is to be able to shut that water off if there is a problem because a toilet leak or a line can blow in the house somewhere, you know, and we're not even talking about freezing temperatures. We're just saying that something could go wrong and this is going to save me from damage and all kinds of problems and having to deal with insurance companies and whatever. This way I can just shut it off. The uh, other problem is in this corner and we'll take a, a look at that in a second here. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about, but uh, there's a garage door right here, right by where the main water line comes in. Also, uh, this big boxy thing back here, that is a uh, water filtering system. And what they had when I purchased the house was a uh, large uh, setup with a, a heat uh, lamp to keep this area warm in case of freezing temperatures. But the reality was simpler than that. This door at the garage here, the air was just blowing in and directly blowing onto these lines, including the uh, filter box here, which I'll just back up a little more so you can get a better look at it. <clears throat> but, but that was my water filter box, and that's where a lot of the problems were uh, right off the bat. Now, once I shut the line off, I'm going to show you the other thing that we, we do. Sorry about the wind noise. Uh, this is an outside spigot, obviously and I insulated it by spraying foam inside the wall because the garage wall is not insulated. So this helps to keep that part of it going. But this also can be opened up and will drain the water systems inside the home. Now you still have to open up your taps, your, 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 your toilets, that kind of thing, and get rid of all the water that's in those lines. And all the spigots on the home, same thing. Open them up, drain all that water out, especially if you're gonna be without power for a really long time and you're gonna be in freezing temperatures this is going to prevent, you know, pipes from busting inside the house. Sorry to be jumping around. This is the corner of my garage. The spigot we looked at is just on the outside wall of this corner. And also the main, which I just showed you where the main shuts off, is on this corner. This garage door was leaking like just the air was just blowing. And you could actually feel cold, cold air through the, <laughs> through the garage when you're inside here. So I adjusted the door and tried to get the door and make sure it's closing nice and tight as possible against the wood uh, frame here of the home. And then I added this kit, which is a seal kit for a garage door. This is just a sample cut, so there's the whole, you know, there's the actual installation. And it's a real quick, takes you 10 minutes to install these things, but it has a nice little rubber flap and it seals. And I'm gonna, I'm actually, I'm gonna show you how that looks when I close the door. So we'll bring the garage door down and 
notice everything goes wrong when you're on YouTube? Yeah. So now you can see the rubber seal kit is right tight against that door, so that pretty much doesn't quite stop all the air from moving in and out or whatever, but it, it, it kills it quite a bit. And this door was insulated, which was, like I said earlier, was a real joke because with the wind blowing around the door and into the garage, it was like, why, why bother insulating? But now that I've got this on and it's insulated, the garage quickly jumped. You could feel the difference uh, after I put the seal kit up. It, the, the garage must have jumped about 10, 15 degrees up and got warmer with the home during these cold uh, days. But this was done again before this uh, big Arctic blast chill came in. And I just like I said, I wanted to show you guys some of the things I did, which probably helped to save this house because at the end of the day, we had zero damage. And I saw, and I think we did okay. We did. I think we did really well, actually. There's a lot of people in Texas right now going, "Yeah, he sure did." <laughs> I couldn't get any of those spigot covers, so what I did was I ran over to the big box store and bought some uh, a roll of insulation, just the regular stuff, nothing too fancy. This is R30, but it was something that was available quickly. We knew this big bad storm was coming, so it was a matter of let's you know let's get on top of this and get it done. And because I couldn't get proper spigot covers for the taps, I bought this and cut it into squares. And then I slit the middle of it to act as a pocket. So this would go where the spigot is, right up against the wall, and hold that. But also there's usually a lot of times there's sleet and rain and whatever. So I bought some very inexpensive garbage bags and I put a slit in the back of the bag to match the slit here. And I actually bagged these. Then I put that over my spigot. Now, the final call on this, I found some old 2x4s, some junk stuff, and I put the 2x4 leaning against the bag to help hold this tight to the wall to help seal it so that I wouldn't get any cold penetration from outside while we uh, suffered with this really long cold snap for Texas. I'm in southern, uh, southeastern Texas, which we shouldn't be getting that kind of, we just don't get that kind of weather. but. It does happen. Uh, apparently, uh, about 40 years ago, it happened before. And let's face it, it can happen next year or it can happen 10 years from now. So it's, it's good to have some knowledge as to you know, what to do in the event of if I can't get this, maybe I can get that. You know, uh, The other thing I did was I insulated my hot water lines with the uh, black tubing wrap. And you can buy that. I call it noodles, but it's not. It's, it's a black insulator pipe. And I bought a couple, oh, about 100 feet of it. And tracked down all my water lines up in the attic and insulated them. Also threw some of my extra insulation on top of that just to help keep those pipes warm. Hot water will freeze faster than cold water. So insulating the hot water line was actually in some ways a lot more important than say insulating the cold water lines. But overall, anybody in Texas will tell you, the power went off and we had no idea how long. Our first power interruption lasted a little over 18 hours. And that doesn't sound uh, like a, you know, depending on where you live, if you live in Minnesota or something, maybe 18 hours even up there, I'm sure, without heat and without electricity, I'm sure things could get into, you get into a lot of trouble real quick. It wouldn't take long. Uh, unless you have a, you know, a secondary system, a generator backup or a fireplace to help try to keep the house warm. But even then you have points or spots in the house that are going to cool down. So the other thing I did was I replaced a lot of the seal kits on the inner and outer doors. Now all this was done, most of it, months ago, except this little emergency here. And also the seal on the garage door was done. Those two steps were taken right before the, uh, the big chill hit. And that's probably what saved this home. We have zero damage and we really weren't even that uncomfortable. Uh, at 18 hours, I uh, lost 20 degrees. The temperature of the house, right before the power went off and again uh unfortunately due to panic i cranked the temperature up to about 74 which is really odd because i don't usually keep it that warm but i cranked it to 74 degrees and then we lost the power well at that point we dropped to almost 54 degrees in about 18 hours and really i'm you know I'm about 2400 square feet that's not bad and then plus the garage of course as soon as i put the seal kit on the garage the garage itself felt like it went up about 10 degrees warmer than whatever the ambient temperature was uh, outside. The garage started to warm up immediately. So I knew it was, it, you know, just sealing the garage door was a big success, but it also stopped my main line from having any chance of freezing 
or my filter, oh, God help me, if the filter broke, the filter's one of those great big glass type, you know, filters, and if that broke from freezing or something, that would have been expensive, messy, I would have had to uh, replace a lot of pipes, whatever, and uh, the neighbors around me, water line, they, they blew pipes, they just blew plumbing all over the place, and the, a lot of them, I, when I asked them, why didn't you shut the main off? Well, you didn't have a main or didn't know where it was. It was a city water line. They didn't know how to you know, get into a city water line and shut it off. It's kind of a shame because if you ever blow a line, you don't have to have freezing temperatures, as you know. In a home, a line can break. Something can go wrong or wear out or something can snap. And, and suddenly you've got water to deal with in order to stop it quickly. Now, hopefully, you know, your home <laughs> when all that happens too, so you can catch it, because if you're on vacation, uh, two weeks is, yeah, not gonna fly. Also, other steps that were taken, uh, during the, the cold blast and the power's off, I went around uh, and we checked every window and door in the house for leaking. We found one door that just through the way it was installed from day one, was leaking on the seal and it couldn't be stopped so we took some blue painters tape and just sealed it up to stop drafting from coming in. The other item we found was uh, one window at the very bottom even though it was fully closed there was still some air drafting in cold air from outside so we rolled up a towel and put that against the window sill uh, up against that window to stop that cold air from coming in. We, I checked over the whole house. Let's face it you don't have electric and it's dead quiet in the house and you know you're getting colder and colder, so it's like, okay, we've got to do something. So let's take a look at things that we can do. Also, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how much uh, importance we could put on it, but I also broke out of a big pile of candles and ran a lot of candles for light, but also the candles produce heat, but there's a trade-off. You know, if you have a lot of candles going, you're sort of sucking the oxygen out of the air and you're pulling draft in from outside, theoretically. I'm not really sure where all that falls into place, but uh, the idea was at least to create some place of heat within the home at the same time, trying to fight that temperature that's just, it's just dropping and dropping. I don't know how long it would take for the inside of the home to reach the temperature that was outside at the time. But like I said, the wind chill was 11. The actual physical temperature outside, I believe, was measured around 22 degrees, something like that. That's you know, for south, southeastern Texas, that's cold. But these same, uh, the garage door and the door seals and things, this will all pay off for the heat in the summertime when it gets 100 degrees and you're running your AC. This will help me more, be just that much more efficient. Uh, the other thing I will be looking into in the future, I have to admit, will be a generator. Because if we'd had power, uh, even a small generator, to run the uh, band system of the furnace, uh, my furnace is natural gas. I could have put the furnace on at that point and ran heat and kept the, the home warm and had a little bit limited amount of electrical power. Unfortunately, again, like I said, most people in Texas can tell you, we didn't expect this. Y'all brought this down from the Arctic. <laughs> and so, ouch. But uh, I wanted to throw this message out this week because it might help uh, just not so much you know, in the immediate futures, I don't think we're going to get another cold blast this year. And maybe next year it might happen again, but I don't think so. But if it, if it did, you know, try to get your home ready and be prepared. If a line breaks, you should be able to shut the water off or shut the main off at least to stop it in its tracks before it creates a lot of damage. I know a lot of YouTube creators out there were reporting they're going to have to cut drywall out, they're going to have to replace the floors. A lot of stuff happened and they're around that Houston and uh, around this area. Uh, some of the uh, fellow YouTuber creators had a lot of damage and unfortunately, I, you know, some of it could have been prevented. A lot of it could have been stopped before it happened. Just thinking it out a little bit with the cold weather. Uh, it was what it was. I am so sorry it all happened to anybody. I sure as hell didn't, you know, we, we don't wish this kind of thing on us, but it happened. Hey, thanks for watching Coffee and Tools this week. Uh, short, please like, subscribe, and, you know, share. And try to keep it in mind. Prepare your home. <laughs>